So I want to thank everybody for coming. This is being um, filmed by Brockton Cable Access. Thank you very much for being here. And, and um, a lot of residents and um, officials. We have uh, State Senator Mike Brady here. Thank you for being here. City Council for Ward 5, Jeff Thompson. Thank you for being here. Bill Mitchell from Massasoit. Um, Sean Ma uh, Mahoney. Murphy, please forgive me, who is the interim city solicitor. Thank you. Mary Walden from Old Colony Planning Council and John Messina from the mayor's office, Rob May from the planning department and a whole bunch of other people. So this is being filmed because not everybody can be here today. So it would be good to, for them to know what's happening as much as we can tell them. And um, the agenda is to just tell you, I'm going to read through the agenda just so we have an idea what we're going to be talking about. So there's going to be a hearing coming up on a bill that Senator Brady filed Senate 2352 um, to sell the property, the six acre property at the corner of Quincy and Crescent Street. The hearing is going to be on January 27th, which is Monday. And since it's coming up, I figure we should have at least our first meeting about what's happening and to get your ideas and just have a conversation. Um, so tonight we're going to talk a little bit about the background of the land and Senator Brady and I and um, uh, the folks from Massasoit are going to talk a little bit about that. The Life Science Center that had been originally planned for that site, um, what happened with that, where the bonding stands for that and the change um, to the project and how um, hopefully our kids and our students are still going to get the same type of um, expanded um, life science learning at, on the campus of Massasoit. Um, requirements for the site evaluation prior to the bid. I know that um, Rob May from the city's planning department will talk a little bit about a city visioning process and what that could be like. Um, and then uh, the current status of the intersection and I'm hoping that between us and maybe with Mary Waldron she could give us a little information about that because I know a lot of people here if you're interested in that site you're also interested in the intersection right there that um, is on the tip list to be redone um, and a current plan for the renovations on the campus. So that's the agenda. Um, when we get to the bill itself, I have amendments that are under discussion right now. Um, I have some handouts for the uh, Mass General Laws that this um, bill will be exempting. I have this little handy dandy layout on how DCAM says the normal process for sale of land goes that you're welcome to and I'll talk about. And I have, what else? I have uh, Senator Brady's bill and I have my um, schedule for office hours and community meetings for upcoming 2020. And I decided that in uh, February, March, April, and May, we'll be having meetings here to give people like um, just updates on what's going on both on that site and just with anything that anybody wants to talk about, but we're always going to have um, at least an update on that site. So those are going to be February 25th, March 31st, April 28th, May 26th. So um, I have this on my Facebook page and I handed out a hard copy of that. So I think I've hit everything that at the beginning, so I'd like to just kick off and say that uh, many people at home and throughout the city and here tonight are concerned about the um, corner of Quincy Street and um, Crescent Street and the six acres that are there. So we all know it as Christos, right? And uh, the conference center. So I'm gonna have Mike talk a little bit about the history, um, maybe like three minutes, two, three minutes. And um, maybe pull into the Life Science Center too, and then I'm gonna uh, uh, talk a little bit about the Life Science Center and anybody else. Thank, thank you, you Representative, and I thank you for hosting this meeting. Um, this, this area, as we all know, is the old Christo site uh, of, of Shawa, well, even before that, the Massasoit Conference Center, that was once Christo's too. That was sold to Massasoit many years ago to use as a training facility. We still had functions there. You couldn't have any political functions because it was now owned by the uh, Massachusetts Community College. But we had a lot of training things and other meetings, community meetings there and so forth. The Christos restaurant, when Christos passed away, they sold that to Massasoit in hopes that a new Allied Health Center was going to be built there. This goes back to the Governor Patrick administration. And I believe it was about $27 million of a bond bill that was to build a new Allied Health Center at Massasoit Community College. In Massasoit, and we have the, the two representatives from Massasoit here um, that can help answer any questions as well, but 
Basically, Massasoit's nursing program was bulging at the seams, and healthcare is where the jobs are out there. We're trying to provide training and jobs for people. So under Governor Patrick, he had two proposals, one to build an allied health center that we're all in favor of on the old Cristo site. The nursing program alone, as I mentioned, had over 100 students with perfect grade point averages to try and get into the program at Massachusetts. So it was going to be a nice allied health center. It would have been great, the gateway into the city of Brockton. Everything was a go. We also had a proposal for a college collaboration downtown at the old Ganley building. If you come down Belmont Street, straight ahead was the old Ganley building. And Bridgewater State, the University of Massachusetts, and the Massachusetts all agreed to do some courses there in a collaboration as well. well New administration comes in, and I'm not blaming Governor Baker, but any new administration comes in, they want to review everything. So everything got kicked down the road and put on hold. Even when Tommy Kennedy was still alive, he got money for the intersection here at Quincy Street and Crescent, and also a traffic signal up the street on Quincy Street, and we both worked together to get a $10 million transportation bond bill for two-way traffic on Main Street and those other side streets, because anybody who knows how to try to get around downtown, never mind the people that live here, but the people outside, they still go the wrong way on the one way, et cetera. So everything was moving forward. Everything got put on hold with the Baker administration. So in the meantime, working with Massachusetts like Community College, they've been losing money on the, on the um, conference center, and they needed to still provide training for these students. So there was another plan to maybe come up and renovate their existing property on the campus. And that's what the governor's administration is trying to do as well. And get funding to uh, renovate existing buildings. In the meantime, you got a, uh, an empty lot sitting there that's looking like a plight to the city, and then you got the conference center that's been closed, and because they've been losing money on it, they've asked us to file a bill, and, and I filed it. We had some meetings about this to come up with another plan, so, the, so to file the, it's gotta be an RFP too, because it's state-owned property, so it can't be just sold to anybody. It's gotta go through the bidding process. And an RFP, I know everybody here knows what it stands for, Request for Proposal. So we, I filed the RFP to put it out to a bid proposal, and it's got to fall into criteria of what the city of Brockton wants. So right now that land is owned commercial slash residential. So anybody who, any bidder who falls in that criteria can propose to bid on that property. And again, I've, I've talked to the city officials, I've talked to the former attorney. If the city council wants to change the zoning or do anything else, they have a right to do so once that goes out to a bid. So right now, the bill has been filed. It's going for a hearing on Monday in the State House in the State Administration Committee hearing. And uh, we've talked back and forth about if there needs to be some changes or amendments to the bill, if everything wasn't perfect. And we s still have time to file some amendments. So I know Rep. Dubois has um, asked about filing some amendments, and right now that's where everything stands. But uh, in the proposal, it was recommended we have a public meeting. So again, I want to thank Rep. Dubois for having this meeting, and we probably will have some more meetings regarding this. Yeah, we definitely will. I just right now want to go over real quick what the bill is about. So in the first section, it talks about um, having the DCAM commissioner in consultation with the Massasoit Community College president um, to uh, decide who it gets sold to, leased to, um, conveyed to, rented to. And um, at a meeting, the president was kind enough to say our new uh, mayor would also be included in that um, consultation. So it will be the DCAM commissioner will decide after this bidding process who it will be um, sold to in consultation with the president of Massasoit and our mayor, which I think is a really good amendment and something that I think is required in my opinion. So um, there's 6.8 acres of land. That's what section two talks about. Um, one of the sections and then no portion um, or parcel shall be disposed unless the commissioner first offers the city um, the first right of refusal. So that's an important thing where um, the city will be able to look at the land and decide if we as a city or if the city as a um, purchaser wants to purchase the land and either um, go through some other process of selling it in a different manner. If they choose they want to take control of it and then sell it in that process. Um, and then a next section talks about the commissioner in consultation with Old Colony Planning Council shall for no consideration convey the city a portion of the parcel necessary for access from um, Quincy to Crescent, which is a right turn single signal coming off of 
Quincy m moving on to Crescent. So um, before the land is sold, the city will be given that land because you know we're going to redo that whole intersection. It's going to be a major um, renovation, so that's going to come in handy. Um, it talks about in uh, one of the sections, E, that um, there'll be a competitive um, bidding process, um, and it lays out how that's going to happen. And I have the actual bill here if anybody wants the, the actual language, and you can always find it online um, by Google searching. And you would Google search um, Senator Mike Brady S2352, S2352. So um, it says here that a public meeting to consider the reuse of the parcel may be conducted by the Department of Planning and Economic Development of the City of Boston, I mean Brockton. So uh, we, I think we agreed that that's going to change to shall. And this meeting, in any meeting that I host as an informational a meeting, does not count as the meeting that's required here. So there, I'm going to be hosting monthly meetings to give updates. And the official meeting, um, if this goes through, as I hope it does, uh, will be conducted by the city's planning board and his, I mean, planning department. And we have our planning uh, director, commissioner. Director, commissioner, director. director here, Rob Main. He's going to talk a little bit about that. It talks about having an independent appraisal done um, of the land, and that would be um, through the Division of Capital Management and Assets. It requires the Inspector General shall review and approve any independent appraisal conducted pursuant to this bill. Um, uh, so that's really good. Um, that really gives some teeth to making sure that everything is above board when the Inspector General actually has to review it themselves. I think that's important. Um, we talk about in section I, let's see. Um, talks that we, you know, the city of Massasoit isn't liable for the condition of the land when it's purchased. The um, person that buys it will have all the liability. Talks about conveying a deed. Um, and if we want to, if Massasoit wants any easements, or egresses or utility or drainage across the property that they would be able to do that. Um, so you can look this over. It talks that the DCAM commissioner has to sign under um, I, the undersigned commissioner of capital assets and management and maintenance, hereby certify under the penalties of perjury that I fully complied with the relevant provisions of all general and special laws in connection to the property and the documents. And then the last clause, which is a really important one, um, says that the money that, it, that is brought in through the sale of this land will actually go to the Massasoit Community College. Um, the money that came from the state to purchase this land. So it was like, and I can be corrected, please correct me, but it was something like $1.9 million back in the 90s to buy Christos II. That was like through a higher ed bond bill way back then. That bond has been paid off for a heck of a long time. And then there was another bond that was floated when Christine Canavan was the state rep here before me and um, Senator um, Cre um, Kennedy was the senator before Senator Brady that um, got something like, I don't know, 24, 27 million dollars, or you might have been the, no, it was Kennedy, 27.4 million dollars in um, higher ed bond bill money to put that life science center there. That was set to expire in 2018 <clears throat> when I was the state rep and Michael was the uh, state senator and we were able to get that expiring uh, bond appropriation extended another eight years. So in my hope that maybe the governor could reappropriate those funds to work on campus to um, do the life science renovations that Bill Mitchell is going to talk about there um, and be able to use that money. There was also nine million dollars for Massasoit to do this as well in the 2018 higher ed bond bill. So now we're looking at this parcel of land and my concern is that it, it's con it's zoned all commercial and the studies that have been done up until this point have talked about housing have talked about um, 30 acres uh, 30 units an acre which I think is really dense and most of the people I talked to thought it would be really dense um, and this bill is filed um, if we get to the point where the amendments that I'm hoping so one amendment is that 
if the if the use is going to be a public use that the construction should follow the prevailing wage law but I think that's going to be fine and I think that it's going to be a private use at the end anyways um, and then that we ask that um, that advisory that I would like that there be an advisory committee to make recommendations to the commissioner on the reuse um, and any reuse restrictions. I would like the com that the commissioner has um, contracts Old Colony Planning Council to conduct a study of the potential uses of the parcel, and um, we agreed on the on the amendment that would add the mayor throughout the whole bill, so he would also have some. Um, some input on it and um, if we get that I was hoping that these two public comment um, and uh, public participation and more um, oversight of these parcels would help us all understand best what we think should be there so when that happens everybody knows that it was coming and no one feels blindsided by it and people have time to talk to people about what they want to see there and kind of come to grips with what might be there because when I first heard residential I wasn't really with it but um, when we went through the whole discussion and I had some conversations with um, Councillor Thompson about um, um, keeping commercial on Crescent Street, I'm kind of coming around to potentially having some housing there. Um, and they talked about linking it to the woods across the street and the conservation land and having some, um, maybe some trail heads um, put in over where the Mayor Brothers um, garage is now because I believe the city is going to be taking that by um, a deal that they do so we can uh, get the right away there. Um, at our next meeting in February, I plan on having more information about the right away um, at the plaza with the sushi place and the nails that we were able to secure that and at the Mayor Brothers um, Automotive. We all know that um, Mayor Sullivan just got on board so he needs a little bit more time to um, give us an update on where all that stands so that stay tuned on that and I'm wondering before we open it up if anybody would like to either talk about um, yes, please. City Councilor Jeff Thompson about what you'd like and then if you wouldn't mind the planning board and Massasoit wouldn't mind talking a little bit, I would love it. Thank you. Thank you, Michelle. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is Jeffrey Thompson. I am the uh, new Ward 5 City Councilor. I'd like to thank everybody for coming out uh, tonight to uh, start talking about this extremely important project. Uh, Michelle, I'd like to thank you for putting this meeting together and uh, for Mike to uh, present the, uh, the bill and all the other uh, officials here today. This is an important, important piece of land uh, in Brockton. And it's the, uh, it's the, be, it's the first thing people see coming uh, west on the 27. It's really uh, a gateway into our city. We're only going to really have one chance to do this project. We have to do it right. And so um, I just want to explain the, the, the actual dimensions uh, of this uh, land. So obviously it's from Christos all the way to Beaumont, right? So, and it's also including the, um, the uh, former movie theater, all right? So that's also a part of this parcel. Um, <clears throat> now there's been a few uh, studies already done on this land. Uh, one was done by the, uh, uh, the Donaghy uh, Institute. Uh, and one was recently done by the Urban Land Institute. Now, um, both of those studies uh, based it upon uh, what the zoning is as of right now. The zoning is an R1C. If everybody remembers, is it? It's all commercial. Okay, I okay. Um, I apologize. So this uh, they they based it upon uh, what the zoning is right now. Uh, some of those uh, proposals uh, envisioned uh, some sort of synergy between uh, Massasoit and Brockton Hospital uh, for some uh, educational and medical uh, facilities. Uh, right now, I don't know if that's really in the pipeline uh, due to uh, the, the funding that's going to require by the state uh, to, uh, to put in a, a med-ed uh, type of facility. So. Right now, what we really have to do is, and I want everybody to understand, is although that the state owns this property, Brockton is going to have control over what's put there. Now, we control it by our zoning laws. So um, there's going to have to be a vision 
really. And, and that's, this is the first step in putting that vision together. We have to uh, put together a plan that's going to both be marketable and also uh, something that's going to provide a, a benefit to the community, right? We all live here. We're going to be driving by it. Uh, we're going to be visiting it. So, um, and this is going to be the entrance of our city. So uh, we, we have to do it right. Now, <clears throat> what we have again we have to build that vision and so i know today we're not we're not going to have a final product but i think it might be helpful at least uh for the uh, citizens to uh tell us what they don't want to see you know uh, uh, what what's going to be there i think we're going to have many uh, discussions about that um, but i think it's important to maybe rule out a few things that um that i think we can all be confident is not going to go in there i think uh, all of us heard different rumors uh, about different uh, types of projects that are going to go in there. Uh, a hotel, I think, was one. Um, 55 and older uh, housing. Um, I, I think uh, movie theaters, restaurants. So, um, you know, I think this is an opportunity to really hear back from all of you about some of the things that maybe we don't want to see there. And then once we get the, past some of that stuff, uh, we, we can start working on uh, what's going to go in there. Yeah, I, I want everybody else to maybe have a, a, a chance to uh, present first. But um, so we're going to work together. We're going to develop a plan. And I hope there's a uh, basically a synergy between the city developing the plan and then the state selling the property. Right. I think it's important that um, we, we have time to develop the plan and then market our plan uh, to whatever developer is looking to develop because uh, the city needs some control uh, over what goes in there. And so, um, again, I want to thank everybody for coming. I'm going to turn it over to Rob May. Uh, he is the uh, director of uh, planning in our city. So uh, he'll have a lot of control over um, the, types of, uh, the types of facilities that may go in there, the zoning. Uh, if, if zoning's required, there's going to have to be a zoning uh, a laws to uh, uh, change the zoning. So again, uh, thank you all for coming tonight. And um, I look forward to speaking to you all again about this extremely important project in Brockton. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. And uh, thank you, Representative Dubois and uh, Senator Brady for bringing us all uh, together here. As the councilor said, um, we have a lot of control over this project um, and that's through our zoning code. Uh, our zoning code was written in 1965. It's not real easy to work with. So whatever happens, they're probably going to have to go to the Zoning Board of Appeals to get some sort of relief. Now think about that, 1965. Um, some of us had party line phones some of, you know, uh, what else was happening? Uh, Bobby Kennedy and Martin Luther King were still alive. Um, we were just wading into the rice paddies of Southeast Asia. And some counselors may not have even been born. No. Um, so the world has changed a lot since 1965, uh, but our zoning hasn't. And so, again, uh, what we would like to do is work through the community create a vision for what we would like to see happen on the site and also that vision needs to be something that's buildable you know we planners go out and they do these great you know we're going to have the high line you know we're going to you know it's like I don't know, or the london eye no 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 that's not going to happen here but what what do we want what supports and benefits the community what benefits massasoit and the and the city in general and then what is buildable what is marketable and what we would like to do is take that and then codify that, turn that into the new zoning for this site. So instead of having to go and present your, your plan before the Zoning Board of Appeals and, and hope and pray that you get four out of the five votes, you actually had a set of documents that say, this is what we, the community of Brockton, want. And here are the guidelines, here are the ramif you know, here are the you know, uh, the, the design guidelines and the design standards. And, and so this then will guide and make sure that we get the kind of product that we want. There'll, there'll be some flexibility in that, but um, I think it's going to give us a much better product. So with that, I'm going to turn that back over to Representative Dubois, who's going to 
Um, Hand it off to folks. Liam uh -oh. said that um, R3 zone would allow something around 19 residential units an acre. Um, can you do that crazy math in your head? But this is what I've heard, that if we were to rezone it to R3, and I'm hoping like maybe at the next meeting, we might be able to have some of these other like extrapolations on paper where which zoning that we already have would mean so many units an acre. Um, I'm gonna be creating a little Facebook um, page on my Facebook page that lays down and I upload all the important documents if people wanted to read them over I'm hoping that I'm going to get that done um, probably by Monday um, and those will be available for people to read um, and so I guess um, would anyone else like to speak before we open it up oh yes we would love Bill Mitchell from Massasoit to come and maybe give a little history from his perspective on that lot and the work that they've done they've done a lot of work and what they want to do in the future thank you very much thank you for everything you do thank you representative Dubois. it's not often that the chief financial officer says that everyone would like to hear him speak so I'm <laughs> gonna stay away from accounting and I apologize obviously I have a little hoarse uh, voice tonight um, so Huntington school grad <laughs> South, South Junior High grad and classmate of Michael uh, at Brockton High School. What, what year are we? 98, right? Yeah, 98. So a little bit about the history. Coming up on our 40th anniversary. Okay, they, we're not supposed to do the math, Michael. We just said that. And clearly you're much younger than I am. <laughs> Fuzzy math. So I'm the chief financial officer at Massasoit. I've been there for about seven years. I'm also a product of Massasoit. I worked in the UMass system for 18 years, came back to the place I love that kind of put me on track. So very excited to talk about uh, kind of what happened uh, with the sale. I know Michael talked about it a little bit um, of the property across the street and what happened when we closed the conference center. Then I want to really talk about, spend a lot of time on what we're doing on campus because uh, it's, it's really quite exciting for us. So there was uh, $27.4 million in the bond bill to build a uh, state-of-the-art Allied Health Center. So Allied Health Center would house our nursing program, which we have a waiting list for, our, our rad tech program, our respiratory program, which we have waiting lists for. It is incredibly difficult to get into. There are kids who get um, denied from us and go to four-year schools and get in. It's a very competitive program. But our facilities on campus show their age, and we've kind of done the best we can with buildings that were built late 60s, early 70s. And for those of you in the business, you can understand when you have a building that that's old, things need to be taken care of. So we're very excited, not to get into the details, but during the change of administration, the money was pulled back. New criteria came in, and, and I, I get it. The state has a lot of property that's in disrepair, and so the Baker administration, which is a finance person I understand, said instead of building new, he wants folks in the state to fix what they have. Fix what we currently have, and it makes sense if we're just gonna add you know, buildings and not really take care of what we already have, that sometimes doesn't make sense. So they talked about can we renovate on campus uh, to do so. So we have been working at the college for the past couple of years at renovating a couple of buildings. I want to know who it is. I apologize. That's okay. Are you from Huntington School? No. You clapped when I said it, so I thought you I might be. You recognize? <laughs> we do. I played the tone at in the fifth grade band uh, down at. Uh, yeah, don't tell anyone. Representative Dubois was a tone at. I played the tone at. One of my proud moments. So, we decided again given the criteria that we were given to request capital money to renovate a couple buildings on campus. Uh, at the same time, um, you know, we had this vacant lot sitting there, which the Commonwealth bought the restaurant. I want to be clear. Massasoit does not have the statutory authority to acquire property. The Commonwealth purchased uh, the restaurant, and then it got torn down with the idea the restaurant would be there. Fast forward, the closing of the conference center, we were losing a considerable amount of money every year, and the Commonwealth wasn't paying for that. Our students were paying for it, yet they weren't benefiting from it. We did not hold programs over there. I mean, it was a nice to have for the city. I know there was a lot of folks who used it, 
you know, for meetings and things. I know the chamber, uh, Mr. Cooney over there used it, but it wasn't benefiting the students in Massasoit. Massasoit felt really strongly it's not fair that the students have to pay for that. We're trying to keep costs down because we have some of the most vulnerable students who come to Massasoit. So we made a decision to close it. The project on campus, we are going to take an academic building, take it offline, and gut renovate it. I mean, start from the inside of the walls and just uh, clear it out. And we're going to turn it into our brand new science building. If you go into our science lab now, it looks like the, for those of you who went to junior high in Brockton, it looks like the South, I guess it's middle school now, it's not junior high, South Junior High Laboratories when I was a kid, because it was built in the late 60s, early 70s. And it doesn't, it doesn't work well with the way we teach today, group studies and things of that nature. It's the old benches and uh, it's just not good for, for our students. So we're gonna renovate, take that building offline, turn it into our science building. We still have a science building, but we can't take that offline to renovate it because we have students taking science classes. So once the first building is renovated and becomes our science building, we are then going to take the old science building and renovate that to become our state-of-the-art allied health center. And uh, we're really, really excited about that. It'll include a uh, simulation lab. Lots of what people do in allied health now is simulation, computers and such. And, uh, so we're really excited about those two projects. As part of the funding strategy, um, we, have, we have suggested that the Commonwealth sell the property across the street. And the legislation, I think one of the most important things in the legislation is that instead of the money going back to the Commonwealth General Fund, it would come back to Massasoit to help fund the project. And so, you know, that's what we're looking to do. I'm sorry, you had a question. Yeah. It, it kind of is, um, so but it's a it's a, a multi-year project. So the project, we, we won't know if we are successful in um, in in competing for the dollars because we've submitted the the proposal to the Commonwealth for the money to renovate, and part of that we used, you know, a, a number to help offset the cost of the sale of the property. <laughs> we won't know till May or June when they make the decision of whether we get the money or not. Yeah, roof replacement. Yeah, the athletic. I mean, <laughs> we have a we have wonderful athletics, and they they had this. Our, our women's basketball team was ranked number three in the country, by the way. Just a little plug for them. Yeah, they're fantastic. If you can get a chance to see these people play, it's incredible. We would have to stop games because literally, the the roof was leaking, and so we started to impact some of the infrastructure inside so that's actually done it's being done by DCAM the state agency who does it but it's it's replaced the roof yeah because it was leaking like a sieve sorry yeah yeah so Massasoit has no say really about how that how that's going to happen it's state-owned property Statutorily, Massasoit doesn't own any property. We can't sell property. We can't acquire property. It actually has to happen through the Commonwealth. So, I, I mean, say, I don't know. I will say that the bill does say that good. the city, you're totally good, the city can ask to have certain whatever parameters if they want to buy it. They don't, they don't have to buy the whole thing if the city wants to take its first right of refusal. Um, but I think maybe that will be a planning process, but we can talk more about that. I just wanted Mary to give a little bit of a background on the intersection. Talking Thank you, Bill. Did you want to? City. Yeah, just really one <laughs> yes, quick please, thing. One of the things that President Glickman, the president of Massachusetts Community College did when she first came here, was she reached out to the mayor's office with the whole sale of the land. And the first thing she said was, it was Mayor Bill Carpenter, God rest his soul, that we wanted to be a partner with the city. We wanted to make sure that we could create a win-win-win. It's a win for the city, a win for the college, and a win for the state, because it wasn't viewed that way prior to President Glickman. And she has continued that with Mayor Sullivan now, and we actually had our first meeting, uh, last, last, was it last, this week? Last Friday? Last I don't Friday? remember. Yep, last Friday. Thank you, Representative <laughs> Um So Mary Waldron is the new executive director of Old Colony 
Planning Council. Is it a director? Executive, Executive director. We're happy to have you. Thank you very much. I'm wondering if you can just give a whatever you'd like about the intersection that's happening there. Maybe a little overview. Unless you want me to buffer that. That's you good? okay. Good. No, I'm good. But my apologies. I've been running since 7.30 this morning and I'm still running. So apologies for my sneakers still on. I meant to change them. But um, the Old Colony Planning Council has been engaged in this project for Geez, I, I worked for Jack Units and I left in 2005, no, yeah, 2005, and I know this project has been under discussion since then um, through its various iterations that Massasoit has, but it's always been in a very important intersection. The role of the Old Colony Planning Council is really the data finder, if you will. So we deal with planning, economic development, and transportation, um, and economic development tying them all in. And as you can imagine, between what Massasoit in terms of education, there are, you have 40,000 students, or what do you, I forget, you have quite a few students. About 12,000 students. 12, students, right, that comes either from the city, comes into the city. 30%. 30%, thank you, Bill. Right, so that's an economic development driver. Sometimes you just see, you know, the education component as only being providing education itself. Education does provide disposable income and and walkability and in you know people coming in and out of the city so placing that on hold for a minute the planning as aspect has always been in terms of working with the city of Brockton um, the ward counselor and others providing at least maybe a potential of, of, of a neutral observation of of looking at what may or may not be um, in terms of the planning um, the transportation is the key. Um, there have been a number of traffic studies and counts that have been done. Um, I did have them for last Friday's meeting, and I'm, as I jotted down a, a note, I've got to send it to everybody, the, um, the traffic counts that have been done. And, and again, the neutral observation of, um, of what should happen. And that means that we have our staff that goes out mornings and night, and we have these different kind of trackers of looking at the counts, of not only of um, people in cars, not only people walking, but people who are taking their bikes. Um, as you can poss possibly imagine, I don't know these numbers, Bill, but you know there could be, a, because if you're talking about um, the community college, there may be people, um, students that may be coming by way of, of bicycle as well. But our goal is to take that data and then to do an analysis of that and to determine you know, the, the length of, of cars in the holding process. Um, and what we do is we take that data and we present it into studies. Um, I do not have those, but I will get those to you, representatives so they can be posted, and Senator, um, to, so they can be posted, they're public documents. I could probably, I was trying to go online when I was sitting here, hoping that I can pull it out and pull up a little bit of the data, but all of the work that we do, we're a public entity, it is all public documents, and we will make sure that they get shared. But the, there is a, the discussion about whether some parcels should be taken, as was previously discussed, in terms of allowing for flow systems. So part of, our, part of the recommendations that have been there uh, makes recommendation, um, but as you can imagine, recommendations one thing, cost of, of taking property is a whole nother item that becomes more of a community decision making in terms of what needs to happen. Um, so we will continue to be working with representative and senators and the ward councilors and the city and the planning office and the mayor's office um, as to taking that data. If we need to do additional data, we will continue to do so. Um, so that is the role that we play. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think these intersection, there might be like four different iterations that um, Old Colony Planning Council created for how that intersection That's could be correct. redone. And we have the money. We're on the what they call the tip list, the which tip is list. state funding. Right. It's the year 2020. I just checked this the other day, 2022. So in 2022, they're going to figure out by then what iteration we're going to do and um, God rest his soul uh, when I spoke to Mayor Carpenter he was talking about um, the best one like that which is the best bells and whistles where everything is the safest and it's really the one we should be doing without you know trying to skimp and that required taking a portion of the building um, that has the um, nail salon and the sushi place in it um, and the pizza place that some people like and I like all of them and just the end of it 
uh, for like 250000 I don't know the exact numbers, but it's been a long time ago. And as a new owner, and I believe that he's asking for more, I'm not exactly sure of the number, maybe 1.5 for the whole plaza, and then the city could take off what it needed and resell it to the pri another private entity or do what they wanted. When I, was, uh, when I spoke with the mayor, the former mayor, he talked about if they rip it all down and they put housing across the street, they could make that a park, which I would like because then the kids would have a place to go and the seniors that live at the Caffrey Towers could come there. But in any event, the project with that intersection is going to give a sidewalk all the way from that intersection down to Massasoit. Yeah, and that caused a lot of problems with the senior citizens and the people that are um, impaired and don't want to walk in the street, which is like everybody. So that's going to be a huge improvement. And um, taking of the car sales, Mahan Brothers, right? Mayor. Mayor Brothers, please forgive. They're very nice people. He's very nice. And so there was that. And so that's 2021. 22? 2022. 2022. So we have between now and then to figure this all out. And thank you very much, Mary. Yes. The, the three-way? By the hospital. Yeah. Oh, by the hospital. So, well, you know, if we're going to talk about that, I think there's, there's a, um, that's a separate issue. But I think the Urban Institute did a plan looking at that site, and they looked all the way up. Because they were thinking originally that they were thinking the commercial district would run from that intersection down to the downtown. But when they came and they saw it for themselves, they said it's obvious that the commercial district goes from the Christo site up to the hospital. So they're looking at, um, in this report that I'm going to post, they looked at um, kind of like how that could interplay with, ha and maybe Rob could talk about it more, but I wanted to open it up for questions, how it could interplay more about more economic development in that area, potentially putting a, not putting the park on the corner and putting it behind the old um, whatever school. What school is that? Shaw. The, Shaw. the Shaw School. Thank you, Senator. So there's been a lot of conversation. I hope everybody participates. They talked about making Livingston more walkable and potentially putting speed bumps there to kind of make it more of a gateway from the hospital to this locus where they might will either have hot, have housing or one one study is looking at it um, having like hospital buildings on it that work with the hospital, but I don't know how real that is. Um, if ever, anybody else wants to talk, that's great, but I would love to know questions. So you have to talk into the little microphone, and we're all listening. I'd just like to get back to your question on uh, Quincy, Quincy and Center Street. That's 123. Why can't those lights be a four-way light, the same you have in Massasoit? That solved 90% of the problem. It's a Band-Aid solution now, but at least you'd have a quick traffic fix at that corner. Is that Quincy and okay. Quincy and Center. Isn't that a four-way, that's a four-way light now. No, what is it? You mean like having a right turn lane and a left turn lane? No, what or? I mean is if you're heading, if you're heading towards uh, uh, Holbrook, yeah. that way has a green light. That way there the people can take the left turn onto Center Street and the people, when that light changes. Oh, you mean it's like so that uh, happens the same, and the then same the thing, other light yes. happens. And now down in Massasoit, You've got a three-way light, and that should be a four-way light for the same reason. All right. Does anybody understand 100% what this is? Okay. So we have the light man here. Jim, would you like to take a swack at this? Our, 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 the gentleman who runs the lights. Well, so I think what you're saying is that when someone is going up North Quincy and they're going to go left, they're the only ones that are going to be entering the intersection. It's called a what? It's called a lead lag. One side leads and the other side lags. So that's something to really look into, and it looks like, um, you know, we can try to look into that, yeah, right? It's, it's actually, it's a, he's right, it's a state all light. So we, we would go to District 5. Okay, so we will go, we will go to District well, 5. We do the same thing up at uh, Pearl, uh, Pearl Street. So Any other questions? Street. Any other comments about what you want to see there? Actually, I'm wondering, Mary, with all due respect, why they would be two separate projects, like with 123 with Center Street and then with Crescent Street, because currently, and I beg you all to come down the street between 3 and 6 oh, any the evening, and, yeah. North Quincy Street, and because the, this back, the, um, the traffic back starts backing up 
up on this side of uh, 123 and carries through. So I'm not sure why they would so be two separate. I can say that um, uh, Senator Brady and myself and Re uh, City Councilor Thompson will, will work on that. And I will get a crack at the answer. And I think it's because of just funding, because this intersection is going to cost millions and millions of dollars. So we have to get the next mi intersection. I was going to say the next millions of dollars. We have to get the next intersection, like through the whole planning and everything. So your question, I think, is very valid. Um, so. As you know, I live here in Brockton. I do go by that intersection. I probably go about every intersection around the city between downtown, Legion Parkway, you name it. So I truly understand what you're talking about. I would really need to take, so being, um, I'll be at OCPC for two months and the paperwork that I have in front of me, I could be sitting on it and I could still only be five feet tall. So, so with, let me, I, what I, before I, I want to qualify and quantify and get back to you in terms of, of the information about the other intersection. I used to be on the board at Signature Healthcare, so I know that intersection in terms of going left and you put your life into the hands of it's so, so I truly understand that. But, I, but let me just double check on the data and the traffic and why or why not. Um, but, I, but the fact that we were called into this intersection was specifically because of Massasoit and the conference center. Not that it doesn't impact, but I think it was the immediate impact. And it is a cost factor. Um, but, but in order to get them continually on a list, on the tip list, you have to start somewhere and it has to start with the design, has to start with the need, has to start with the community, and then you work up on the way. So, um, so, and again, being with District 5, there's only so much money within a certain area. But let's start in sharing the information. So it starts with sharing the data, sharing the information. Again, I'll, the report will be shared with, um, on any and all public, um, I'm looking at John from the mayor's office. I'm sure the mayor's office would share that information as well. And. Um, and try to get to the, I'll have to get back to you in terms of why that other intersection was included. There have been a few deaths. It was tragic. Actually, yes. If I could, so I found at a recent meeting that there is, and it's all online, and I think the mayor's office was going to send share it, is um, you can get this data about crash reports across the whole Commonwealth. And that crash report is real time. And it is amazing how you're able to, those are reportable. It's a police department report. So not all crashes are reported, but that link can be shared by all the public officials here. It's an amazing factor that you can look at at any intersection in Brockton. Does anybody have any ideas of what they would like to see at the intersection? Is that your, anybody? I would love to hear if anybody has any ideas of what they want to see at the parcel. Great. Uh, housing would be a good idea as long as it's not low income housing. I think there's enough low income housing in Brockton. And um, I know that uh, Representative Dubois is uh, in favor of some low income housing, but maybe a, a little tiny bit of it, but not the whole facility. I mean, we have uh, Campello Towers, Bel Air, Bel -Air Street. Uh, Crescent is right there, and then there's more up on uh, that street that goes across, going to the Thatcher Street. I don't know the name of it, but that that street, I I, I just. Thank you very much. So, do you have any other ones? I think every all the proposals I saw were for workforce housing and. Um, and market rate housing. Uh, there could have been, I don't remember if there were, were there any affordable units in those proposals that they put forward? Did they go into that detail or no? Yeah, and when, um, would you like to participate in this at all? Talk about what you've done? Thank you very much. Give it all my development ideas. Yes, you have to stand up. We were I have to stand up. So, you know, we were looking at the site and we made a request. Oh, my name is Fran DeCoast. I'm a Broughton resident, but I'm also in real estate development. So in, in a couple of years ago, I was working with a local um, human service organization, and we were looking at the parcel, you know, and uh, we did have, um, and we actually talked with the college a little bit, bit about some of this stuff, but we, we were looking at a mixed use for the property with some retail along Crescent, and then um, service-enriched housing for um, clients of the human service organization, 
and then some more market housing maybe towards the back we had talked about maybe doing a buffer of townhouses to the neighborhood so um, we were interested in reusing the the uh, the uh, hall the, the reception hall because we I think that the city needs that type of uh, use on the side um, I actually had an idea in my head that it could be a, a like a hotel limited service hotel site um, it might be, it might be a tough self but I, I think there's a need there servicing the east side of Brockton Whitman Abington sort of over there so you know we as a development organization were interested in and uh, trying to pursue uh, the site through the state. Um, one thing I'd like to add though, um, I've had some, some pretty good success in RFPs over the last few years of state-owned property. One's a federal property, one's a state, where the RFP process was done by the local jurisdiction in partnership with the state or the federal organization. As a developer, I look at that RFP with more certainty that what's being proposed for the, for the uses by the local jurisdiction can actually happen as opposed to being controlled by a jurisdiction that doesn't have local land use control. So, Thank you. Thank you, Fran. Would anybody else um, like to say what they'd like to see on that? What is so, well, um, so uh, you know, I don't know all the 100% details, so it's something that um, Governor Baker, and please correct me if I'm wrong, introduced maybe, or somebody, I think it was, and what it is, is it's like, it, everybody pays rent, but it's the, the, the housing is focused on people that make, I want to say, somewhere between 30 and 60,000, 30 and 80,000. So the idea for more wealthy communities was like um, uh, some of the people that worked in the town couldn't actually afford to live there. So they came up with this idea. But really for us in Brockton, well, the way I see it, it's kind of like market rate because most of the people that I know make around that amount of money. So having housing that could suit that the person in that income ballpark where it is, I don't know how the financing structure happens, where the person does pay rent, but it's like slightly subsidized to get it there. And I don't know if it's tax incentives or how it actually happens through this process. If anybody looked up Massachusetts workforce housing, you could probably become an expert. So. They were always, no, okay, so I will, I will say this. No, so the workforce housing was, um, would be apartments. It would be like, you know, all different bedroom type apartments. And um, so it wouldn't be like a single room occupancy SRO. And I do not think that what Fran was suggesting was that either. I think it was like seniors that weren't ready for the nursing home, but wanted to have some support and there would be apartments. Um, I think there would have been one bedrooms, but I'm not 100% sure. One and two bedrooms, he said. I can't. They didn't get that far. I'd like to ask a question to uh, Bill Mitchell. Bill, your chief financial over at uh, Massasoit. H how much is it to renovate those two buildings? Forty-one million for the two buildings, and the state has not okayed any money being diverted yet to Massasoit. Now, this, you've got to understand something. The students have already been shafted once. Now, I'm, I'm a retired school teacher. F 40 years, I just retired in June. The students were already shafted once by not build, having that building built. Now, the money hasn't been okayed for the two other buildings, as you're saying, to be renovated. It seems like they're getting shafted again. Something's got to be done to get that money to renovate those two buildings for the students, period. And this is where you come in, Michelle comes in, we've got to get that money for the students. Somehow, some way, that money, some of that money has got to go over there to renovate those two buildings. I have had uh, so many of my students, I cry because they couldn't get into the nursing program there. Okay? It is so competitive. You're absolutely right. It's probably the most competitive major in the whole eastern Massachusetts to get into that program over there because we, we know the need for nurses all throughout the country. Well, we've got to get that money. That money has got... We should not sell for anything to be built there until we know some of that money is going to be diverted to Massasoit to build those two buildings. The other thing is, I'm hearing, I think it's a done deal, we're going to have housing over there. But no, nobody ever talks anymore about building a cinema theater, a major bowling, major bowling alley. How about a performing arts center? 
we have a city of 110,000 people, and nobody's talking about it, and we need it. And believe me when I tell you this, our schools are busting with population because we keep building apartments, apartments, apartments. And, we don't, and we're not building houses. We're not building houses, we're building apartments, apartments, apartments. And our schools are really busting. We've got, we really gotta take that consideration. We have enough housing in Brockton, apartment housing, we really do. Right now, we need some entertainment in Brockton, whether it's jazz clubs, whether it's a performing arts center, whether it's a cinema, we've gotta start looking at that people. You can have all these people in apartments, where are they gonna go at night? They're not gonna spend their money in Brockton. They're not gonna spend their money. They're gonna to go to all the surrounding towns and spend their money on the restaurants there. They'll go to East Bridgewater, Randolph for the movies. We need something here. We really need some type of complex to, for entertainment here. Thank you. Would anybody else like to talk about what they would like there? Um, you spoke about not wanting to have any more housing. There's five year wait to get into senior housing in Brockton. I could be dead in five years. Yeah. I don't, I don't, yep, yep. don't we, we know. Right. Yeah. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, there needs to be four <coughs> seniors. So I will say across the street, um, next to the gas station, across the street from Massasoit, they just had how many units approved? I wanna say 26. 34 apartments for um, single room apartment, single, not SRO apartments, but 39 apartments um, across the street from the Christos lot on um, North Quincy. It's that open, on, on Quincy, it's that open lot that's now fenced. They just went through the Zoning Board of Appeals and they were approved to um, put in 36 one bedroom apartments. Um, the idea that um, single people will be able to uh, live there, and there's, I think that they're all market rate. I don't know 100% on that, but I'm pretty sure they're all market rate. Um, and so that will back onto the greenery and the conservation land. There's someone that's talking to somebody in the city about donating a bunch of conservation land to the city on the other side behind the um, auto dealership, but I don't know where that is in the discussion part. Um, anybody else want to pitch what they would like to see there? We need a lot of senior housing in Brockton. There are people in there that are not seniors. Right. right so there was a there was a court case a long time ago that kind of um, allowed disabled folks and some other low income people to be able to live in the senior housing. I, I can't Uh, my my reasoning for coming over tonight and bring, to bring up was my thoughts were, as the gentleman over here that spoke before me, was uh, a community performing center. Uh, I recently uh, went to a performance, uh, went over to Norwell to the to the the uh, the, Nor the community uh, what used to be the community playhouse. Wonderful, sort of the. Uh, performance of Tommy done over there. Next week I'm going to Taunton to a building that was reconverted from a courthouse. It's now the District Arts Center. Brockton does not have a place for something like this to happen. And there's too much talent in this town uh, or that goes through this area that we miss out on. People after working all day don't want to go back into Boston to go to a, a play or uh, whatever may be going on in there. TD Garden and, and everything. Well, I think a, a performance art center, something along that idea with some other related things tied into it, you know, maybe rest, maybe restaurant, uh, you know, several different little restaurants or something like that. It would be a, a, a no, it would be a win-win so you bring up a few things. So there's the, the Rock Stadium that the city is also dealing with, which is a total different thing. The Performing Arts Center, um, I know that some people know that I filed a bill to give the 
the um, conference center to a nonprofit to run an east side community center for everybody in the city. It had been twisted in the media to say that it was a Haitian community center, which it never was. It was always going to be a community center for the east side. And I still have that as something that I would like in the project, like as a citizen and as a representative. I've been trying to push that, that this conference center be used as either a community center, intergenerational community center. But I'd be open to what you're talking about as well and I'm going to ask in the visioning that at least one of the um, like uh, visions uh, I don't know how you do it but one of the ideas keeps that as some type of a community benefit I mean I know that you know nobody wins everything so everybody should like work for what they think is important like well, you, you said you, and go from there you dragged the, the uh, you brought the Shaw's Center back into us into the conversation. The Shaw's Center at this point is a disgrace to the city of Brockton. Well, the city does have a plan for that, and I think they're right. going to be rolling out the plan it, for it that in be, the. It never yes, been allowed that's to come to yes. That state. But we just have to move forward at this point. But you are right. You are right, 100. percent right. And I want to thank uh, City Councilor President Shirley Azak for joining us and being awesome and do a great job. You know, and I don't know if anybody else would like to talk about what they'd like to see. Can I hand it this way, and I'll come back to you? And then after Skip. I don't mind seeing a senior senator over there or something from Master Sawyer that's been in business for years in the Brockton Hospital. What I don't like to see over there is a strip mall that you've got two or three stores vacant, and I don't like to see a garage over there with all kinds of cars over there for repairs. Thank you. Thank you. I think those are both great points, and um, I think that's why some of the market analysis has shown that they didn't need more commercial. Can I do like this, this three, and you guys can pass it to each oh, other? Sure. Thanks, Michelle. I don't know if can everyone hear me. Um, I thought that it would be a good place to relocate the Council on Aging, because the current site on Main Street and whatever that side street is, it's very a uh, busy street, it's convoluted to get in there and park and drop seniors off. And if you try and drop someone off, I would like it to be, the, it, I think it's a good idea to relocate the current Council on Aging to that site where it could have much better access and parking and be able to drop off seniors closer to the door and not on Main Street, which is really busy. And I don't know if you anyone pulls in the back of that lot, but it's it's very congested and convoluted. And there's no good place to drop someone off if the back lot's still a long walk to the door or Main Street's got a curb. And other than that, I agree with everything that's been said about uh, having something that would breathe some new life back into Brockton, the entertainment, movie theater, music clubs, performing arts, bowling alley along with um, retail and some maybe some nice restaurants just not fast food and so that's my grand vision thank you <laughs> also kind of along the same idea as uh, you know entertainment and such um, I'd like to see some sort of uh, adult rec recreational sporting venue somehow included in some kind of a multi-use large space um, facility that would certainly allow for you know shows and music and such but we're seriously lacking a uh, large enough space within the city for adult recreational sports we have a lot of uh, yeah there's a lot of community um, adult recreational sports that go on it's volleyball you have the uh, Latino community that had, does a, uh, a variation on volleyball you'll see that going on in the playgrounds particular in the uh, the Edgar playground um, soccer that's going on in some of the the, uh, the playgrounds through the summer and again these are just folks getting together with their friends and co-workers and family um, and, and throwing together games and what happens is though the weather deteriorates we're in New England and all this stuff goes away um, I am the president and coach of the Brockton Bruisers roller derby and that has been a, a real sticking point for us where we have been practicing at the James Edgar playground since July and as of you know December or so that has completely gone away um, there is no at this time uh, indoor space where we are able to practice and 
again, as a team that wants to give back, and there's a lot of teams out there, adult recreational teams that want to be part of the community, giving back to the community, and but there's no place to have practices, to hold games, to bring communities in, even from outside, you know, to have a state-of-the-art complex that you're now drawing from other cities that want to come to us. And again, done well, it does become a gateway into the city. People arrive there and it looks fantastic and it's inviting and it says, yes, this is a city that is committed to its community in development, in the arts, in sports, because our heritage as the city of champions does come out of the sporting, um, certainly side of our, uh, you know, comp, uh, sorry, I'm losing my train of thought, but we all know that boxers are, you know, you know, number one in the sea. We talk about Massasoit basketball. Yeah, there's so much great stuff here, but the, the a, a sporting complex done well could do really, really well. And um, would love to see something like that. Again, it would, it, it would have food. It would have maybe some sort of arcade. It could have, you know, uh, just so many different events going on. It would be busy 24-7, you know what I mean? Drawing in, you know, the right kind of people, money into the city. People would want to stay here. They want to work here. They want to visit here. They want to play games here. I want to bring my family here. So we would love to see somebody do something, please, in terms of a well-done, multi-purpose, multi-use, but include sports in this, please. It's definitely something that's lacking for the grown-ups. Thank you, sorry. I hate to be a Debbie Downer. Uh, last month we were at a uh, Ward 4 meeting and I believe uh, Suna Castro said that there was a study done up at the mall by the current mall owners that lasted 18 months. And I believe the figure was $80,000 they spent on a survey. The city will not support a cinema. Just for uh, raw facts, a digital uh, projector is 80 grand. That's one projector. And now you're talking, they want to put in 10 projectors. That's a million dollars almost in projectors alone. And then you've got to put the people in the seats to get them. I go to movies every week. And I'll tell you something. I've almost had private showings. And this is on a $5 Tuesday. Okay. So, uh, matter of fact, there was one, one theater. I, I brought this up somewhere and I said, why don't they do this in Brockton? And they said, well, we, did, we tried to do this in Brockton or we wanted to do this in Brockton, but we had to shut our theater down because there was a certain element coming in there and using it as a, uh, what's the term, crack house or a hot uh, shooting zone. So they would go in there after the movies and have to sweep up needles. We don't need that in Brockton. Where was that? That's a problem. All right, would any, thank you very much for your contribution. I love it and I appreciate it. Um, Joanne. Thanks, Michelle. Hi there. Um, so I live up on the northeast corner of the city by the Montello station, and um, I'm the president. So I live up on the northeast part of the city by the Montello station. I'm also the president of the Village Neighborhood Association. And one of the problems that we face in our corner of the city is that we don't have any place to actually meet. Um, the only options for us are to go downtown and try and get a room at the library, which is pretty much almost always booked full. Um, the Harbor One Bank, which has some community space for use for free, but that doesn't work after hours or on Sundays, and Sundays is usually when we meet. Um, and there's no restaurants or anything for us to use. So Tin Rays, thankfully, has been very kind to us and allows us to have our meetings there. But um, places like Sidelines, they charge for the use of their rooms. So I would like to see that space on the corner where Krista's used to be um, maybe turned into a new East Side Library. So the East Side Library that we do have, I don't know how many of you have been there recently, but it's really tiny. And the meeting space downstairs in the basement is, um, yeah, dank is, I was gonna be nicer and say not particularly welcoming, <laughs> um, but it'd be really nice to have a nice space on the east side for folks to actually meet and you can maybe combine that with a recreational center as well too. One of the um, things that I hear a lot about is um, swimming. There's, especially for adults, like both my parents are seniors, both of them should be swimming a lot more because of their um, health issues, but they find that a lot of the pools that are close to them are always filled with kids um, or the lanes are taken by people who are 
super active um, and they're not quite at that level. Um, so it will, be, it will be interesting to see if we could sell the East Side Library, put a couple, two, three, four houses there. I don't know how many would fit there. It's a residential neighborhood anyway. And then use that money to build a new library on the Christos lot combined with maybe an indoor pool or rec space. And then I think it would be suitable for housing above that too. So kind of a community slash mixed space. Well, I love that. Thank you, Joanne. Um, Chris, can I put you on the spot as the executive director of from Miss Entire Right of the um, Chamber of Commerce? Great. Thank you. So I'm Chris Cooney. I'm with the uh, Metro South Chamber of Commerce. I've been in this role as president for 22 years and I uh, work with many of the businesses uh, in the community. We commissioned the study uh, that is being referenced here. It was done by the, the president's office, uh, Marty Meehan of UMass uh, Amherst. He has an institute for economic development, which is called the Donahue Institute. And uh, they have researchers there who will, uh, for a fee, uh, assist communities and uh, nonprofits like ours in looking at uh, particular properties. We've hired them probably six or eight times, mostly on parcels in Brockton over the uh, threshold of five acres, just because uh, there's not any land left in the city of Brockton. So uh, the limited spaces that are here uh, have some value. And uh, we've really gone into this uh, with, with um, uh, the idea of removing f uh, fiction from fact. So oftentimes as a newcomer to the community, I would be told information about a site uh, or several sites. And we started to want to know whether that information was accurate because it was impacting people's perception of what could be or might not ever be. And uh, so that's how we got into this business of actually hiring researchers to go and do an inventory of the property, collect information, put it into a study, talk to influential people, maybe in industries that we've heard uh, would be of interest, and then uh, just have us all reading from the same page. So at least we knew exactly what the property is, right, or was, or, and I'll give you examples. The fairgrounds, we also did a study recently on the mall and uh, the uh, Good Samaritan Medical Center, exit 18 of 24. Uh, we did the CSX property, which was about 30 acres uh, just in downtown, which used to be a rail yard. Um, and now it's un underutilized. So what this study um, conveyed was uh, perceptions of, of a lot of different expertise uh, in, in the community. What I will tell you is I talked to two possible developers. Uh, one has been very active on the Cape uh, in doing senior supportive housing. Uh, they basically were looking at their queue, f taking their queue from the governor. The governor is pushing for housing creation and production uh, in uh, gateway cities and within proximity to Boston. Uh, what was in particular interest in this study, and it's online and we can share it with everyone so you can take a look at it. It's interesting, there's visuals and it gives you a proximity to the, to the mall and to the, to the hospital and to the uh, Massasoit and whatnot. But uh, what they were looking at is uh, the concentration of people in the city of Brockton who are not uh, aging in place in a place that is conducive to aging in place. So in other words, you have a lot of people on second floor walk-ups, third floor walk-ups, they're over the age of 75. Uh, they might be on Meals on Wheels. Uh, they can't get up and down those stairs very well. Uh, they, this company builds a facility that where they rent out units. Uh, everything is conducive to aging in place. So there's elevators, there's wellness space on the first floor. Uh, there might be some recreational space. There's uh, spaces, car spaces, uh, parking spaces out front for, uh, grocery delivery and Uber and that type of thing that seniors can use and whatnot. It tries to anticipate uh, what the needs might be. The location is, uh, according to them, uh, of interest because it's near the hospital and it's near Massasoit. So you have entertainment, you have classes, you also have health care and whatnot. You have a bus route that goes right by there. Uh, there's this commercial area there, there's a grocery store and whatnot. Uh, so it, it, it's pretty nice in that regard. It's an urban setting. Uh, they, know, they know from demographics that uh, there is enough of a demand that we want to move those people out of the second and third floor walk-ups and open it up for younger families or, or, or people who don't have that difficulty getting up and down stairs, uh, while also creating economies of scale to service those seniors as they age. So you have one visiting nurse comes in and they can hit 15 units in a day as opposed to driving, parking, walking up two steps of stairs, knocking on the door. You know, it, this is what's going on every day in the city and cities just like this 
all over the Commonwealth. So that economy of scale can create uh, potential for profit uh, and uh, efficiencies and just better quality of life while opening up housing units for people who can walk upstairs. So that's, that was our most serious inquiry um, and uh, meetings were being arranged uh, up, right up until the day uh, Mayor Carpenter passed away. Uh, so it, it, never, it never got uh, too far beyond um, you know, that after that because uh, I've actually reached out to him last week knowing that this meeting was coming up just to see you know, if they were interested in coming back. And uh, so I'm, I've got some dialogue going there. But um, anyway, it's, it's an interesting site. Uh, the one thing I'll note is Borough Avenue goes right down the middle of it. Many of you know that. I don't know if you know the name of that street. It's Borough Avenue. If you combine that, there was some, some talk with the city planner about closing that street and combining that acreage with the two other acreage. So now you have a much larger piece of property. Uh, then you might be able to attract a little bit or do a little bit more green space or, you know, Michelle and I talked about possibly bocce courts or something, you know, on the site because you, you're, you're gaining that that space of a street that otherwise wasn't counted in uh, in a scenario. So I, I hope you read this, the study uh, <laughs> and you look at it and use it in your, to shape your, um, you know, your questions and whatnot. That's all I have. Thank you for doing the study. That sounds like a really interesting idea. Um, that sounds very, very interesting. Are these, are these units sold? <laughs> are they rented? They're rented. They're rented. Are they subsidized or are they so, uh, I, if you want me to answer that, there's a distinction between... Because uh, you're better at this than I am. I don't know. Okay. There's a distinction between um, income-based and asset-based. So what we found is that if you have a two or three family in Brockton and you're in the middle floor because that's the best place to be, right? Because you get the heat from downstairs and you get the insulation from upstairs, right? <laughs> and the th three families, that's where you want to live. But you don't want to age in place there. But it's worth right now six or seven hundred thousand dollars. But you're only getting Social Security of about $2,400 between you and your spouse, and you're in your 70s, and you're like, maybe we should sell this place. There's a lot of maintenance, and now we get tenants and all that, and it's getting more difficult to get up the street. Uh, well, these units would be uh, income-based, so based on your Social Security, not on your $500,000 that you just pulled out of your, right, out of your three family in Brockton. You can still have that and qualify. So these are not people without disposable income. Uh, they have disposable income. It's just one probably lump sum from a sale of a home, but they don't want to leave Brockton and there are doctors there and they have kids at, or grandkids at Massasoit. And uh, so that would be how uh, it could work. Yeah. So we like that, I think. Um, would anybody else? Okay, we're wrapping it up. Well, all right, of course you can. All right. Thank you very much. Guys. Actually, I'm here because I didn't realize when I moved to the east side that like all affordable housing goes just two miles. So that's what, I mean, to me, you know, right now they're proposing another property on Thatcher Street for, 100 and, for 170 issues, 170 units on Thatcher Street. So then we have what? How many hundreds here? 900? No, it was... Um, it's 30 a square? Somewhere, somewhere 19 a square. Right. Acre, no, some were 19 an acre and some were 30 an acre. So if there were mm -hmm. six, 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 180 at its max, which we do not think is going to be. And so, uh, 20, So, well, getting back to my point, I guess when I moved to Brockton 30 years ago, I moved here. It was an affordable house for me. I moved here thinking, you know, hey, city works together, right? That's how they did it in Boston. I moved to Brockton. There's so many back doors. And again, I think this is a done deal. Nope. With all due respect to all of you guys, you know. Everything around, everything in Brockton is always a back door. From my experience here in the last 33 years. And I think most of you know me because, you know, I'm going to tell you how I feel, unfortunately. And I feel like, you know, I could sell and get out of here just like probably most of the people are, the good citizens that live here. And we're attracting, you know, get a bunch of renters in. I can section eight my house. Why not? Right. What do you care about me? This is what you're telling me by putting in the constant affordable housing units. You know, we have lack of police right now. They take over an hour to get to your house. Trust me on that. Firemen, the schools are busting at the seams. Right. All we're doing is worry about government Baker and what he wants right. and getting more affordable units in. I don't mind elderly or sportsplex. Do something for the citizens right. instead of always worry about the two million they're going to give us for putting 170 right. units. 
Well, I will tell you, I 100% agree with you, and I thank you very much. I think you're speaking for most of the residents here in the city that feel that way, exactly like you. Um, and I myself, because, you know, I've been elected now quite a long time, but I got into this as kind of like a rabble-rouser, community organizer, wanting to make sure Brockton stayed a nice place to live. And I like the diversity, and I value struggle, and I don't care if you're rich or poor. Those things, you know, I think it's great no matter who you are. So, but I understand there have been a lot of backdoor type things. And I will tell you that through this process um, and moving forward, part of the reason that um, I handed out this brown piece of paper that, will ha that has all the meetings that I'm gonna be holding here every single month is to kind of tr force transparency. I think everybody here has good intentions, but if you force transparency and folks like yourself come and make sure that we don't, um, you know, or watch on television, and we'll make sure that we do everything to make it as transparent as possible. Right down to like one of the amendments is to talk about having like Old Colony Planning Council come in and do a review, and I've always found them to be really, I mean, I would hate a project, and I'd go talk to um, Pat Chiamel and Mary's predecessor, and he was always straight with me, told me both sides, and most of the time I came out um, agreeing with him um, because he had Brockton's interest at heart and I believe that that's how it is in that department. And um, so I'm trying to put my foot in the door and make sure that it that stays open for um, citizens to have full access. I think that keeps all of us accountable, including myself, in everything that we do. That's what public government is about, is serving people's interests and making sure that they're heard. So um, this is the first meeting, and um, I could name on my fingers and toes deals that I thought weren't really um, appropriate, but all I can say is that um, because I have to look at you in your eyes and other people in their eyes, and that's the only reason I became a city official, I'm gonna do everything I can to make sure that this process is transparent. And I know that other people here would say the same to you and be totally honest and true in their words, but I can only speak for myself, and that every action that I'm gonna take is gonna try to make sure that there are no backroom deals, even if it's like lined with gold, that we just make sure that we might not win everything we want, but at least we'll make sure that um, everybody is treated respectfully. And um, if there is something there that doesn't turn out to be what has been promised, um, we'll at least all know that um, we tried our best and that there was nobody making money off of other people's sacrifice. Um, and I think I want to thank uh, Ward 6 City Councilor Jack Lally for joining us. And, um, but I get your point. So that's why, that's why I'm putting all this out here on the table. This is why it is weird. Like when, when um, the bill was filed to sell the land, um, the five chapters of Mass General Law that it circumvents, there's a lot of them. Um, I was concerned about it, so I brought it to House Council. Um, they made some suggestions. I made some suggestions. We sent them over to Senator Brady's office. Some of those were promulgated into the, into the bill that was filed. So that's really great. There are other ones we're still working on because, you know, everything is a conversation and the reason um, I got concerned is because there were so many chapters exempted um, when I met with the House Council he said that it is not abnormal for a bill to be sold a bill to be passed to sell state land even though the mass general laws are onerous and very detailed and you would think that every parcel of land should go through that process he said more often than not legislators like my uh, senator brady and myself file bills to sell the land to expedite the project to make sure that the community the city of brockton and the people are engaged in different ways so i was you know because i've not been a legislator my whole life here so it's a learning process for me too but you know when you do pass a special piece of legislation to to circumvent mass general law it is you know it does open the door for potential things that would go ways that maybe the citizens wouldn't want or leave it open so that's this whole process as we're going to go to this hearing on Monday we're going to suggest amendments we're going to have the meeting here in February we're going to talk to all of you about the amendments that were passed and then moving forward I think everybody's committed to an open process right all right back with the microphone why are there laws that need to be circumvented and what are they Is it oh so there's a there's a thing over here that I have the print out of the laws that are um, 
that are moved around on that you can look at? Um, I can't answer that. Um, but I do know that it's not abnormal, but we, we, we are saving some of the elements of it. And then I think we're just going to wrap up with Senator Brady. And then we're all ready to go. Thank you, Representative. Oh, my knees. Um, so our job as legislators, and they asked me to file the RFP, and there's two things. You, when you're selling state land, you can just send it out for a bid, and it goes to the highest bidder. We have no control. An RFP is a request for proposal that you have a little bit more teeth to it and say to it. And once it goes through the process, then it's up to the city, as was mentioned, if they want to change the zoning for that area, they can do that within the Zoning Board of Appeals and the City Council, and they can change their local laws. Our job is just to put it out for the request for proposal. It's up to the city to decide. We did have a, mayor, a meeting with the new mayor last week uh, to bring him up to speed because we've gone through three mayors, unfortunately. We lost Mayor Carpenter, then Moise Rodriguez was an interim mayor. We had meetings with him, and now we have Bob Sullivan. And I'll tell you, one good thing is we got Mary Walden, who's got a yeoman's work of experience in the city. Um, we have Pat Sermella, who's staying on as a transition with the Old County Planning Council. We have Chris from the, from the Metro South. We have a bunch of people who have a yeoman's worth of experience. And we're trying to bring the new councils up to board. I, Councilor Thompson has been right on board with both Rep. Dubois and myself to keep up to speed. We're on the same page. We have a Council President, Shirley Azak. She's been around the city for a long time. She's been at the meeting, so everybody's on the same page. But the most important thing is we want to represent the residents. Now, the, the, the big other side of the coin is everything costs money, and that's the reality. We have this, you know, like somebody brought up about moving the senior center over there. The senior center already looked at the Massachusetts Conference Center. I was told, and I'm not, I'm not an assessor, I'm not an expert, it would be over $2 million to refurbish that because it's been closed. Once the building is closed, you've got to bring it up to code and the city doesn't have the money. So we got money for the existing senior center with the help of our representative Jerry Cassidy, Claire Corner, Michelle and myself, to get some money. They're looking to expand where they are. We obviously know there's parking needs there. We're trying to address that. We did get money for a new parking garage downtown, but with every step you take forward, all of a sudden the inspector in the city said, well, the lighting should have been done this way. So that's delaying things. And unfortunately, you have rules and regulations to follow, but. That's supposed to alleviate some of the parking there to, to get more access parking. And as was mentioned, you mentioned about that survey with the theaters. It, it's a shame. I grew up like all of us. We went to the movies all the time with cable and everything else. People don't go to the movies. I saw the Abe Lincoln movie was the last movie I went to, and it was out of town. That was about two or three years ago. I can't even remember. You probably would know. But I, who's got time to sit in a the theater? You know, we're busy. I, tonight we had five other meetings we were supposed to be at. Luckily, some of my legislative aides were able to cover me for that. I thought this was the most important one. But everything we've got to do comes up to money. And um, the bottom line, and I don't know if Master Soid wants to add anything, but they need money to, and we did get some money for them to do the roofs over and for solar and so forth, but they need more money to renovate their existing properties because the plan for the Allied House Center, which we we're all in favor of, Get kicked down the road from the current administration. Can we have John Masia from um, the mayor's Yeah, here's office John. Out, just Thanks, so you know that the mayor's involved. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name's John Masia, Director of Constituent Services in the mayor's office. I just want to express uh, the mayor's transparency from last uh, Friday's meeting. He is on board with everyone's concerns. He is in Washington this whole week, so he is not here. I am here representing uh, Mayor Robert Sullivan, uh, but I just wanted to... Yes, and our city solicitor is here, Sean Murphy. Um, just to let you know that we uh, we do want to remind you that once again that uh, the Mayor Robert Sullivan is um, is with you and your concerns, okay? And, and Thank you, so the first hearing is going to be Monday in the State House, but that's going to a committee of state administration. After that, it most likely goes to a com another committee, which will either be Ways and Means, Bills and Third Reading. So anybody can still send correspondence to Rep. Dubois or myself or any of the other elected officials what you'd like to see happen. There's still time, but again, it's got to go through the bidding process and the RFP because that is the law and we have to abide by the laws.